Welcome back, everyone, to our prayer journey, Revelation Bible study. Today, chapter 11 and verses 15 through 19. And this is a real joyous occasion just about to take place because that woe just passed and the seventh trumpet is going to be blasted. A trumpet that means freedom and victory for the Christian, for God reclaiming his creation and for the rest of mankind close to doom. So it depends on what side of the battle lines you're on, who blows the trumpet and what it means. But let's see how joyous this trumpet blast is in verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of God, of the Lord, and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever. Yea, it is time that God is taking back his creation. Man lost it, and Jesus reclaimed it. Man lost his soul, and Jesus reclaimed it, if you're willing to accept his gift of his life, his perfection, and his life that he lived for you. In verse 16, And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on his seats fell upon their faces, and they worshiped God. Now, this doesn't seem exciting to a non-Christian, but I don't know if you ever walked into a church that is really worshiping God and how communication they have individually with God, and yet also corporately. I remember going to a man's retreat, and I can't sing. And we had no instruments. There was probably about 300 men, and all of a sudden... You know, we did a hymn, and we all sang together, and not many of us had good verses, voices, but boy, was it overwhelming that tears came to my eyes, because it was so exciting to see people loving God, knowing God, who created them, and who was fellowshipping with them. So what I want to show you here, too, in chapter 7, of Revelations and verse 15 through 17. It says here, Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in the temple. And he that sit on the throne shall dwell among them. That is our Lord. We have a distant fellowship now. Our spirit bears witness with his spirit. And then we're going to have uh, a personal insight seeing of the Lord and have fellowship with him. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst. Uh, neither shall the sunlight on them nor any heat. Now, is this talking about physical needs? I don't think so. I think what this is talking about, they'll hunger no more for God. He's going to be right there. They have found the well that's springing up to eternal life and can partake upon it all the time. Neither will we need sun anymore because the Son of God will shine upon us. We have the body now, the spiritual body, that will be able to dwell in the presence of God forever. Rejoicing will be the greatest joy and we will be touched back by our Lord and Creator. We see that in verse 17. And the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them. He shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. You know, when people die, a lot of times, I always call this a psalm of the living. Psalm 23, the good shepherd. He lead me beside still water. Here it is, the everlasting the everlasting life psalm. But as we are on earth, we could be led by the good shepherd. But when we get there, we will see him and we will know him personally. This is the great promise of Christianity. 
So it's verse 17 saying, Give him thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. He has taken back the earth and gives us an opportunity to dwell in perfection with him. And the nations were angry. And this is what I was saying about that trumpet. On what side of the trumpet you stand makes a big difference. For the trumpet for the Christian is victory. For the trumpet for those who lost and refused Jesus Christ it is wrath. And the nations were ang angry. The wrath is come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged and thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroyed the earth. And God does care about the environment too. He cares more about his people, but he cares about the environment. God gave us a world that we were supposed to care for. And even the best Christian and the best meaning person who believes in green uh, green earth and green energy, we all failed. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in the temple the ark of the testament. All of the promises that God had made, the budding rod, the manna from heaven, the word, the law of God, the, tar the Torah. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and hail. You know, for one, it's a party. For the other, it's wrath. As we close out this chapter, take it to heart if you do not know the Lord. Time may be shorter than you think. Check out in the description of this video and find out how you can know the Lord for sure. And until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease.